Well, hello there, everybody. It is me, Postmodern Cowboy, and I'm playing Terra Invicta today. It's a brand new game from Pavanis Interactive, uh, courtesy of Hooded Horse, the publisher, and it looks just fantastic. This is a grand strategy espionage space politics map game. I love me my map games. Um, I don't think I've done a map game for this channel. Maybe I did a little like Europa Universalis last year or something. Um, but this is this is brand new. I'm I'm a big fan of Paradox titles. I've played a lot of EU. Played a lot of Stellaris. Um, and this is kind of like the perfect mashup of maybe like a Hearts of Iron, Millennium Dawn, and Stellaris. Um, but it's you know it's a little simpler. It's a little more elegant. It's a little different. Um, it is it is of course like um, low low science fiction. So it's like um, contemporary Earth starts in October 2022 um, and goes from that point. I'm not going to get too much into um, what the game is about. I'm going to, you know, reveal that slowly. This is only my second time playing the game. I did muck around a bit with the demo when it was out a few weeks ago. Um, but what I will say, and, and this is um, by way of a content warning, surprise, surprise, I'm going to get political on this stream. You know, you're probably going to hear me um, say some things that you might not agree with. Um, and if you don't agree with me, uh, let me know why you don't agree with me down in the comments. Um, I would I would appreciate that. Um, I think it would be, uh, you know, interesting to have uh, sort of a, a more developed conversation um, about the things that that I believe, um, you know, as, as I'm presenting them. Because there's going to be things, you know, this, this game is about geopolitics. It's about espionage. It's about, like, the current year. Because it's 2015. And, you know, in discussing the current year, in discussing uh, the future that occurs after the current year, and, you know, the different, like, interests and factions that, that uh, are manifest in this game, um, I, I think it... You know, it, it behooves me to like draw on some personal experience. I, I know a thing or two about these things. Um, you know, uh, one of the game's developers, a fellow by the name of uh, John Lumpkin. John Lumpkin is uh, a former AP journalist. Um, if you go look at his Twitter, uh, he's got, uh, he's the creative director for Terra Invicta, um, or at least for P Pavanis. Um, he's, he's in the, the credits in the game. Um, if you go look at his Twitter, he's, he's got like a big, uh, you know, press freedom background. Like he's, he's about like um, criticizing the, uh, attacks on uh, media institutions and media professionals by uh, supporters of the former president, Donald Trump. Um, you know, that's something I did. I did that professionally. I worked in a press freedom organization for uh, two years, uh, give or take. Um, wound up leaving. Um, I was fired in international disgrace. It's really funny. You can go find that story online um, if, if, you, if you care to. Um, you know, I stand by what I said. I stand by what I did. I, you know, I'm on the right side of history, and I know that. But when I see a game with such like interesting and complex and nuanced politics and themes coming from someone who's not only got this professional background, but is writing science fiction, which I am also doing currently, um, it makes me really excited. It makes me really happy to see uh, people creating things that tell, uh, tell a different type of truth, um, not an, an alternative truth. Alternative facts to that, but the point remains Wait a alternative that there's- facts? But um, interpret the world in a way that um, you know, is simultaneously fictional, um, but like toes the line of reality, like really like pushes the limits of what narrative can do in terms of conveying um, some sort of journalistic truth. Um, and I'll leave you to suss out maybe what that might be as I play. But that's my content warning. I'm gonna be political on this video and there's nothing you can do about it. Suckers. Okay. So uh, we're gonna start a new game here. I'm gonna move myself on the screen. I'm not entirely certain what the idea positioning for a talking head is on the screen when uh, Terra Invicta is up. Uh, it is, it is, you know, a pretty nice game. Um, okay, what are we doing here? Modern scenario, full solar system, eight factions. Um, what the minimal solar system is? Interesting. Full solar system is 350 space objects. Okay, yeah, let's go with 350 space objects. Um, higher performance impact, I don't really care. Um, okay, factions. Factions are important. We've got a bunch of different factions. I don't remember what they all do, um, but what I will say, uh, if I go to customize, no, it doesn't. It doesn't. Uh, okay, it doesn't. It doesn't give you. Just says the resistance. Protect humanity by resisting the alien invasion. So um, the resistance is like a, um, you know, uh, an Earth rebel faction, but they're 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 good. They're benevolent rebels as compared to like. Humanity first, who want to kill all the aliens, um, and this is a game about aliens um, arriving on Earth. So, humanity first, or you know, your America firsters, your your uh, neo-fascists, your human supremacists. The initiative uh, want to exploit the alien arrival to gain power. They're kind of like your your um, 
uh, satanic elites, your Freemasons. Um, no offense to any Freemasons I really may know, um, and I do know some. I'm not I'm not anti-Mason, um, but they're, the initiative is coded in as like sort of like the, the secret cabal of like worlds manipulators um, and oligarchs and stuff. And I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about that as we get into the game. But uh, the servants, um, easier playthrough, it says. I want to support the aliens by any means necessary. So the servants are really like religious fundamentalists and like fanatical xenophiles. Um, the protectorate protect humanity by appeasing the aliens. So this is my personal favorite faction um, because they favor a diplomatic approach to uh, the alien crisis um, rather than eradication, rather than uh, full surrender. They want to uh, negotiate some kind of like coherent middle ground uh, and they're still like a progressive force. This is very much your like um, Western neoliberal democratic uh, faction, um, but but also like a little bit on the um, uh, the diversity and inclusion side. Like this is um, very Canadian. This is the protectors of very Canadian faction. Um, the Academy uh, want to convince the aliens that we are equal. So here's your like um, Elon Musky supremacist kind of like tech supremacist um, like science faction. Um, the science faction and science fiction. I'm not, I'm not so keen on the Academy approach. Uh, intellectually, um, I think that the Excelsiorists, which is what I call them, are um, leading humanity down the wrong road. Um, and then there's Project Exodus, who are like the, you know, the Musk uh, type, uh, you know, maybe more so like Bezos Blue Origin, but they uh, want to leave our world uh, behind and cede our solar system to the aliens and go to other stars. Um, and interestingly enough, there's some theme in there um, in the science fiction that I'm writing. So this is this is really cool to me. This is like, I, I'm I'm stoked to play this. Um, I, I don't know anything about the rules and systems in this game. Um, I have barely, barely played, but we're, we're gonna come into the Protectorate on normal difficulty and, uh, and we're gonna see what happens. <sighs> Yeah, no, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a really big fan of, uh, of this game design. Um, I, I think that the time was right for this type of game, for this type of storytelling. And you know, I'm in a bunch of like paradox groups uh, on uh, the book face, um, and I see people on Twitter talking it up. Um, like, we need some hooded horse uh, groups. Um, you know, I might, I might start one on Facebook, um, just to like get that like lefty uh, hype going for these games because these are really important concepts and. Um, unlike other map games, they don't just seem to be ceding space to, um, you know, your your chetty neckbeard, um, like Anglo-German military history nerd. This is um, a uh, highly uh, informed, highly intelligent approach to um, map games, um, to map painting and map strategy games. It's not really map painting either. It's it's hard to it's hard to it's hard to place what's going on in this game. But once you see the map, you'll understand. Boy, it's taken a long time to load. I don't remember taking it this long before. We remember the day the stars answered, the day we learned we were not alone. As a familiar sun rose on an unfamiliar universe, some of us saw wondrous possibility and others existential danger. The astronomers had insisted that the bright streak in the sky was no natural phenomenon. Most of us didn't really believe them until it burned through our atmosphere and crashed in a remote region, leaving only wreckage and uncertainty. In our ignorance, we fractured, taking refuge in our most primal emotions. Each of us saw what we wanted to see. The world we know is more precarious than anyone cares to admit. It rests upon a delicate balance of compromise and mutual understanding. And when a terrifying new force upends that fragile peace, it falls to us to put the pieces back together to create new balance for us and for our children. Okay, so the basic premise is that a UFO has crashed on Earth, and in this case, it has crashed down in the Lhasa region in China. Um, cool. So... Last time I played, it crashed uh, near Prague in uh, the Czech Republic, um, which, you know, put this sort of center of intrigue, like right right in where the center of intrigue may, might currently be. Um, if you had to point to it on a map, 
Um, but uh, I, I'm interested to see this uh, this Lassa playthrough. Welcome, Commissioner. Okay. The Council has appointed you so we're the leader of organization. I am Kiran Banerjee, your aide. The alien arrival represents the greatest danger humanity has ever faced. Any species able to cross the vastness of space and reach our planet. Okay. So we think the aliens might be a threat. Spoiler alert, they probably are. Um, but we need to investigate and find out what it is they're all about. Maybe I can move myself on the screen here again. I don't see anything happening in the bottom right corner, um, but I see some things happening in the bottom left corner. So like I said, um, we are basically the Canadian faction. Um, the Protectorate is most closely aligned with uh, with Canada. And um, where, where else in the world do I have a diplomat? So I got a diplomat in uh, Poland, looks like. Uh, Belarus, actually, Belarus. So got a counselor uh, in Belarus right now. That's cool. Um, boy, the difference between Poland and Belarus is substantial. Anyway, um, so... I guess I need to start by sending him to the crash sites. Um, and I don't actually know where Lasse is in China. So my, my, my geographical knowledge is, it might might uh, might show a little bit here. Oh, it's it's on the border near Pakistan. And oh, oh, we're in like Kashmir. <laughs> like, oh, that's cool. Um, so it's, it's still crashed down in a place of intrigue, just um, a different place of intrigue from the last time I played. So I don't I don't I don't remember how to do this. Um, we're gonna have to assign a mission to somebody. Um, I don't know how to assign the mission to him yet. That's gonna be my first order of business is remembering how to do that. You click on him, and then I guess you click on the place. You click on the place, you, you right click on the thing. There's nothing I can do. Okay, let's just start the clock. Okay, confirm assignments, there we go. Um, No, I'd like to send, uh... Oh, he wants us to go to South Korea and... Okay. Okay, you can go to South Korea. I don't want to... No coup. Let's let's run a public campaign in South Korea. We must persuade the people. Okay. I'm here. And Rosalie um, will go to the crash sites. And... She will investigate the alien activity. We'll recon the site. Okay, um, and then I confirm the assignments, and they're on the way. And I can unpause the game, and she's already flown there. Oh, she's flying there. She's flying there. I think there's some travel time. I don't. I don't know if they pop up immediately or. Yeah, I guess. I guess she's there now. And you see, time is ticking forward. So it's October first, twenty twenty-two. Um, happy birthday to somebody if they see this. Uh, yeah, just gonna speed things along here. I think you can speed time up quite substantially. Yeah, um, but I'm gonna keep it on. Three. So the UN Security Council is meeting. Um, <clears throat> So you can introduce your faction to the world. You can quietly steer support to your faction, um, or you can remain in the shadows. Um, in this case, I think we're going to quietly steer support to the Protectorate. That seems like the most common sense thing to do. A moderate approach for a fairly moderate faction. Um, I don't think they're actually a moderate faction. I think I think it's one of the more interesting uh, approaches to an alien arrival um and you know you do get big vibes of the, the, the movie arrival like um big big vibes um it's just it's it's smart it's smart i don't know how else to put it and there's so much depth to it um but it unfolds with a, a certain pacing um there's little these little white lines flipping around the world are um uh i think the chinese and american stations like the international space station and uh something built by project exodus which i, I think i think is um a China-backed project. I'm not. I'm not actually sure on the lore here, but um, 
The big commodities I, I want to look out for are influence um, and the Public ops commodities. In Good. Direction. So we're gaining influence in um, uh, South Korea. So public support has changed 8%, now stands at 42%. That's fantastic. South Koreans are like, yeah, we like we like the protectorate. We're, we're about that. Um, we're probably less likely to get nuked um, in there in their in their version of the future um so in this case i will repeat the mission uh there's a new hope that we can overcome our capacity for strife strife to address the alien arrival as one people um you know it's it's idealistic it's utopian but uh Maybe, maybe finding alien life would bring us all together. I doubt it, though. We're like, like, like this, like this game kind of predicts. Like, we're gonna fight over the scraps. Like, if there's, if there's any advantage to be gleaned, it's gonna be like, you know, Russian oligarchs running off to meet the aliens, being like, "You must help us against the Americans. They're evil, and we are good." And like, the aliens maybe not getting the like local dynamic because that's kind of how um, you know, colonialism and imperialism works, um, and and maybe fucking things up. And 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 as I understand it, the gameplay loop is um, very much built around that like. The aliens themselves are working for their own interests on the planet, and they're they're starting to uh, integrate themselves into world governments um, covertly and overtly. Like that'll all get revealed um, through the plot. I don't know if it'll be revealed on this episode, but I'm probably going to do a multi-episode run of this game because it's fantastic. Um, and I'm also going to play some Going Medieval tomorrow when I get around to it. Um, but okay, so our management team. Um, we're gathering. We're selecting our internal management team to oversee our affairs. Uh, we're gathering personnel from a variety of disciplines. Um, we got to emphasize a specialty. So I like this. This is see, this is a very cynical breakdown. But this is how it really works: lobbyists and influencers, scientists and engineers, officers and operators, or financiers and investors. Do we want the oligarchs? Do we want the militarists? Do we want the excelsiorists? Or do we want the like manipulators? <laughs> like, I think in this case we're going to go with the manipulators. Um, I'm I'm doing an influence playthrough. I think the protectorate um, seems to have. Uh, influence in mind. Um, I'm going to try to steer as many world governments over to my cause as possible. Um, you know, focusing on... Um, this is interesting, so take a look at this. Um, if I go to Russia, um, see, Russia is an authoritarian state, so I may not want to project my influence over authoritarian states, um, but if I go to Canada and take a look, Canada's a full democracy, right? And so some countries in Europe are... Uh, Poland's a flawed democracy, um... Norway's a full democracy, so I may want to build a faction of full democracies um, in the Protectorate. And that, like, again, sort of like neoliberal NATOization <laughs> might might advantage uh, me in some way, um, you know, given those countries are, like, more predisposed to be, like, stable, prosperous. Um, I, I feel better about, like, building a... Oh, enemy counselor detected. Okay, so there's, so, of course... Um, there's an, another counselor. I don't know who they are. Um, somebody else is investigating the aliens. Um, so on, on the next... Um, we found something. Oh, she just finished anyway. Small bonus is analogy research. Uh, okay. So. Aliens weren't there. Um, nobody got the aliens, we think. Um, other factions are using uh, discriminatory hiring practices will be different. Um, we're going to build our numbers um, by being sensitive to needs of the marginalized, um, more open, more inclusive. See, we're like, we're building the better world. The Protectorate is like, um, I, I haven't detected a flaw in their reasoning yet, but I'm, you know, I'm, I'm sure it's there. <laughs> it's, it's like, uh, and we gained some influence and some science research. Yeah, okay. Cool. Now we get to research alien signatures, um, which we have not found yet, I guess. When it becomes available, I've got to complete it. Okay. So where's my project list? Is there a project list? Is it under research and development? Yeah, I guess it's going to be under here, isn't it? Um, well, I can acquire organizations and stuff. Yeah, this is so cool. Like, I and project granting organizations will provide bonuses for all our projects. Like... I worked in the nonprofit sector. Like I, this I understand. This is like, again, you can tell you can tell that uh, like the creative minds behind this are um, 
familiar with the way things really work. Oh, 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 check this out too. This is so cool. Okay, let's go to Canada. So Canada has three influence points possible, right? Influence points or control points rather. Um, you know, you can you can control the executive branch of the Canadian government. You can control the legislative branch of the Canadian government, or you can control the goddamn CBC, the mass media. <laughs> So, and as your faction integrates itself into these governments, you gain control. Um, and I, that has all sorts of like unique outputs, allowing you to like instrumentalize those nations as factors to achieve your faction's goals, um, which is more or less, I think, what's happening right now with like the war in Ukraine. Like, I, I really believe it's a um, research alien signatures. We're now able to undertake the alien signatures. Okay, where is this? One second, I'll, I'll get I'll get back to the war in Ukraine, um, which is actually on this map. Uh, maybe I have to change the project. Yes, I'd have to change the project. Okay. I can only research one thing at a time, I guess. That's that's what I'm I'm reading from this this menu. Um, I don't know, global research versus council engineering projects. Being global research, I guess, is stuff that everybody's working on. This is all, um, yeah. So we contribute. So everybody's contributing a little bit to the research. I get it. Mission to space. So like our that that that's fairly realistic. You know, nobody goes to space on their own anymore. Um, you know, even Elon Musk, Starlink is using like. Uh, facilities in Kazakhstan and, and NASA research and like um, there's a lot of international cooperation Roscosmos still working with NASA despite the situation in Ukraine um, but yeah so the war in Ukraine let's uh, let's manage and uh, talk at the same time um, so like look I think I think the situation in Ukraine is just a matter um, you know on a macro scale there's a lot of factors uh, influencing don't get me wrong it's very complex um, and I don't want to trivialize any single part of that um, but there's a there's a shadow war going on earth the real earth in which um, some um, world governments uh, that have succumbed to corruption, like the Russian Federation, um, like Belarus, um, that have become a full, uh, a fully autocratic, um, are being subverted by the interests of private capital, uh, by the oligarchs, uh, by the international plutocracy, if you will, um, who are consuming nation states, who are instrumentalizing nation states as a vehicle to achieve their uh, financial, their personal and political goals. Um, and that's resulting in um, all sorts of bad stuff. And, and, and the war in Ukraine is really a war uh, over whether Ukraine will fall to the interests of the international plutocracy or part of it will, will come under their control. Um, and in the, in the other corner, you've got like constitutional. So you've got the like the democracies of the world, the um, I'd say like liberal democracies, um, strong or weak, corrupt or not corrupt, or resisting corruption or not. Um, and they're fighting back against that. And so like there's like left wing arguments to be made for like, um, you know, maybe criticizing NATO and its role in the conflict, but like the strongest left-wing position is like one of uh, critical support for the Ukrainian people in their struggle. Um, I'll keep on that tip in a little bit, but I'm just trying to figure out, to confirm her assignment. Uh, no, I don't want to. Let's figure out. No, let's not figure out. Um, you know what? I'm just going to send her to Canada and we're going to. Uh... Establishing our presence. We're gonna try to take control of Canada. <laughs> a 16% chance of pulling our it off. Sick world. The aliens are our saviors, and all who oppose them are enemies of the future. All who oppose them are enemies of the future. That sounds like uh, that's some extremist rhetoric right there. I don't know how I feel about the servants. Don't know how I feel about the servants. A little scary. Some fake Posadas vibes. Um, we have encountered the servants, so let's close that. As other factions are discovered, they each give you their little their little intro blurb, and you know none of them are that creepy. I don't think the initiative is pretty creepy. I guess you know they are they are those oligarchs um, and plutocrats. But yeah, I really think that the strength of a democracy is its ability to resist corruption. And in the case of Ukraine, it's a country that was heavily heavily corrupt under Yanukovych, uh, became progressively less and less corrupt. Um, and under the most recent administration, Zelensky's administration has introduced um, new anti-corruption measures, appointed anti-corruption uh, like politicians to oversee that as a department um, within their government. Like they're making steps toward being um, a democracy, toward being like a healthy functioning democracy. And 
uh, Russia's effort has been very much to set that back um, for all the rhetoric about like rooting out Nazism and fascism and corruption. Um, it's actually the exact opposite. A Russian victory in Ukraine would result in like the Nazization of the country, the like the rise of uh, like supremacists and capitalists to uh, you know uh, like the status of national looters. They would they would take that country's wealth and uh, feed it into the coffers of the Russian oligarchs who were behind this war. Now they're failing, now they're all failing, and it's it's very interesting to see how this is playing out. Um, but I'm pretty convinced, I'm pretty convinced that the situation in... The um... people will come to our side. Okay, uh, South Korea likes us even more. Um, not much more, though. Public support only increased by 6%. I think it was, yeah, so, like, I think it, I think it actually decreased a little bit with time. Um, but let's go we'll there. We'll be ready for new orders soon. And he's been detected in the Seoul region, so maybe it would be time for him to go to grounds um, for a season. Um, look at this org marketplace. The FBI. Uh, this is the yeah the, the Russian intelligence. Um, Voice of America. <laughs> oh, you know, you know that the person who wrote this knows what's going on in the world. That's so cool. Okay. Um, oh, I could recruit a new counselor, can't I? How much does that cost me? Um, it doesn't say. Oh, there they are. There's the costs. Yeah, I can afford a new counselor for sure. I can even afford. Um, what do we got here? Diplomat a fixer. Um, that's interesting. Was a Nigerian fixer, um, Polish professor, Chinese professor, a New Zealand tycoon, um, a quite a quite expensive uh, professor, fixer, and operative, and and tech mogul. So you're you're Elon Musk here. Um, yeah. So you, you know. <laughs> Taking over. Oh. Uh, we have a control point in Canada. We succeeded. 16% chance, and we succeeded. We have now influenced. CBC is on the side of the protectorate. And, you know, it always was, right? Like, <laughs> CBC actually helped get me fired from a job once upon a time. But uh, let's let's not talk about that right now. Um, yeah, so the location, Toronto, Canada. Uh, Rosalie Samard is leaving Glen Gold Studios, feeling like she's accomplished something. Um, this is amazing. I love this game so much. Okay. Let's continue. No, uh, I don't want to repeat the mission either. So, cleaning things up. <sighs> What's her next logical? Okay, let's do the recruiting first. So we're paused. Um, I want Polish operative or a Nigerian fixer. Kinda, I kind of would. Investigation six. Operative is espionage six. So does the fixer. You know, these are uh, loyalty of ten versus a loyalty of seventeen. So the Polish operative is loyal, um, has higher security training. Um, okay. All right. Let's get a let's get a direct action um, Polish operative who lives in Indonesia. Uh, she's 47. How old is that? Not that I, you know, not that I'm uh, going to discriminate based on age and hiring practices. <laughs> Already feeling bad. Um, and the Nigerian is 42. So, you know, I don't, you know, let's let's go with the woman with experience and some security training. Um, she's got all sorts of cool missions that she can do. Her traits, she's paranoid. Boy, don't I know it. Um, and she's a hard target. Paranoid hard target versus streetwise ethical veteran an aware survivor low profile hard target paranoid and how do i pronounce her name let's get this right m amberingsi m burningsi m amberningsi hendoko amberningsi hendoko okay let's hire amberningsi um and I'm not going to call her Amber. Okay. So now I got three operatives, um, and they're all... I'm going to avoid the United States for the time being. Um, you know what? Let's... Let's send... Who's my... Who's my... Uh, 
Who's my guy? Who's my guy? Uh, there's a. How do I? How do I pull up my other counselors? There he is, Fyodor. Uh, still don't understand fully how to get the mission interface up. I guess because we're not at the the mission phase yet. We have identified some new organizations we may want to acquire. What are the organizations we might want to acquire? Okay, so he wants to defend interest mission in Canada. So we're going to defend our interests. Gather intelligence on a counselor, which can enable us to target the counselor with missions and learn more about the faction the counselor serves. Oh, interest. So she's like a. Oh yeah, I, I like this. I like this. Uh, this 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 girl. Um, can also s assign her to protect. Now let's do I'm that. Here. All right. So now she's gonna bodyguard. Boy, I got all these these other. I'll keep them safe. Fantastic. Where okay. <laughs> this game just blows my mind. Just blows my mind. Uh, it's it's a little bit like the. Just a map management of um, oh, what was that? What was that game? It's a uh, Cold, Cold War. War espionage tactics, um, Phantom Doctrine. Phantom Doctrine, but like had it had like the map agents management. This is a lot like Phantom Doctrine. Um, super, super into it. Okay, uh, now let's get some other missions going. Um, we're gonna defend our interests. No, I don't want her to defend my interests. I gotta select him somehow. Um, I don't know how to though, and that confuses me. Okay. Securing our control. Okay. He's going to defend interests service. in Toronto, um, which is where I am right now. We're just we're just like uh, building up our little faction headquarters in Toronto, and she is going to she could surveil the location. She could uh, provide advice to the country. Um, she could work to control the nation again. Another 16% success uh, to get the legislative branch on our side. I feel like I feel like I'd be overplaying my hand there. Um, oh, I can can I spend more? Oh, I can spend influence. Oh, so I got 30. Wow. Establishing control. Okay. Now I understand. Wow. <laughs> wow, that's cool. Can't believe I got it in the first try without spending influence. I guess you know Justin Trudeau. He knows what's going on, I guess, right? This, uh... Whatever their politics, Canadians understand that as a middle power living next to the world's only superpower, Canada has a huge interest in an international order based on rules. Aliens afoot. <laughs> a cabal of <laughs> international bad people out to subvert humanity and be on their behalf. Um... Or, you know, with self enrichment and empowerment in mind. Let's see, what else can I do in relation to Canada? Uh, I have not unpaused. I should unpause at this point. Protecting our interests. Can you just keep doing that, buddy? Keep protecting my interests in Canada. It's interesting that Toronto is the, the, I mean, it's the biggest urban center, I guess. And like the, the regions aren't, you know, very, Whitehorse is a region, Calgary is a region, Vancouver is a region, Toronto is a region, Montreal is a region. Like, the, the regions are named for their cities, but they're not. Um, Toronto is the capital region of Canada. <laughs> it's, it's like... It's, <laughs> Patently untrue. <laughs> uh, and you can like you can like stage little coups and like organize protests and like send a convoy to Ottawa if you really wanted to. Like, oh, uh, you know, I can't I can't I can't wait to get into some of the like the nitty gritty of um, the how and the why these things happen. But you know, this is this is just like a very early game. The very oh, it's paused again. It's a very early game. Um, Defending the VIP. Badass.
Who's this out here, Bermuda? Georgetown. Okay. I'm put a gun in my head and ask him what country or what island Georgetown is on. I I wouldn't have the foggiest. Bermuda is out there, isn't it? So I think what that is. I spent a couple years in Bermuda as a kid, actually. It was a good time. Don't remember much. It was a good time. I distinctly remember um, beautiful, beautiful gardens, beautiful outdoor gardens, botanical gardens, just like paradise on Earth, um, and lovely beaches, and stinging jellyfish, stinging jellyfish, and people having panic attacks about sharks near the water, and like like all of those sort of early formative experiences that uh, you know. Anyway, um, it's a little biographical, but uh, okay. What's shaking here? What are all these things? Wrapping that... up here. Wrapping up here. Clearing things up. Okay, these are just notifications. Got it. Uh, so America seems to be under the control of the Academy, um, primarily. The Academy has at least one control point in America. Oh, oh what do we got? We got Wall Street. We got um, the Black Lobby, um, or you know, maybe it's the White Supremacists, but it's identity blocks. Um, we've got corporations. We've got the mass media. We've got the legislative branch and the executive branch. So America has more potential control points because it's a larger country um, than Canada. It, it has more different levers and handles that you can uh, interact with to uh, control it. It also has a much larger military. If you see, there's like all of these like second Marine Division, uh, third infantry division, first infantry division. And, and you know, the, the, the war is, is, is a part of this game. And there's like, I haven't even, there's, there's a whole solar system. So you wind up building like ships and going into deep space and visiting all these like asteroids um, that are out there. We've got uh, our people in place. Okay, so Control Nation mission was a success. Uh, we've now got two control points in Canada. Um, I wonder if Psyche's on here. Psyche's a like multi quadrillion dollar uh, platinum and gold asteroid um, that I'm I'm pretty convinced that uh, they they. The they, um, Elon Musk and crew, the the real oligarchs, um, that they want to exploit and mine. Um, I'm pretty sure that asteroid mining, um, the wealth of the universe, like this incredibly valuable, um, worth like ten times the whole world's economy, I might add, um, will is is something that they're going to do without checking with us first, um, and they're they're going to steal the wealth of the universe right from under our noses. And I and I expect his uh, his little uh, astronomy blocking st Starlink satellites have something to do with that plot um you know if i was writing science fiction that's how i would tell it but anyway okay um let's change some assignments here don't need a third control point in canada right now executive branch who needs the prime minister um let's huh thinking thinking We'll make our appeal. Okay. I might have her set up surveillance in Norway as On well. Overwatch. We're just going to move from country to country. And... I'm going to have her stay in Canada and advise the government. my expertise. Okay. So we're gonna, we're gonna jump the ponds. We must not only defend human lives from the aliens, we must ensure those lives remain worth living. So, you know, Beltalota, like, I'm, I'm getting, I'm getting, um, Militarist, but like progressive this militarist, maybe even time. like quasi-communist vibes, um, anarchist perhaps, from the resistance. Um, they want to fight the aliens to protect humanity, but they don't want to exterminate all the aliens. And there's a, there's a, there's the dividing line. They're willing to resist, but they don't want to proactively exterminate. Um, there is a difference there. Don't know where we encountered her. The resistance. 
Lending my expertise. Okay, so uh, we're increasing Canada's research output by one percent. Just keep her on that for now. Alien signatures has been completed. Okay, uh, what happens? Eliminate any tracks or traces of the alien crew. Uh, and for now, it appears we've been successful. The aliens disappear with a trace. Um, new recruits are flooding into our fledging organization. Our base of operations is alive with optimism and new ideas. Many have plans and ideas for what the alien arrival could mean. There's a sense of blooming potential. All very exciting. I am sure this can only lead to positive things. It feels as though we are witnessing the beginnings of a cultural revolution. Protectorate is great. They're great. So far, they're great. Someone was like, oh, the Protectorate are like, the like bad faction <laughs> comparing them to the other factions i'm like what what are you talking about <laughs> okay um new objective investigate alien abductions alien abductions they're stealing people missing animals and human beings in the regions near the crash site in china already the more xenophobic voices in the media are blaming the aliens and that's probably all the spies traipsing around shooting the witnesses but anyway it's not el chupacabra um, it is essential that we investigate this as soon as possible if this is some kind of propaganda operation designed to harm human alien relations very good consideration we must uncover it as soon as possible we cannot allow a handful of loudmouth bigots to sabotage our future god i love this game okay and research alien origin so we've got to figure out where they came from um and it appears that their ship was manufactured in our solar system. They might have a local base. Oh, okay. okay. Whoa. Um, no, I don't want to look at the tech tree. An engineering project. I guess audience research was what I was working on. Um, Okay, and the other things will uh, come into focus. So we're, we're creeping up on um, Global Skywatch, uh, Mission to Space. Um, we Are Not Alone is lagging. Um, the Resistance seem to be leading the efforts in Skywatch and the Mission to Space. Um, surveil location, mission complete. Um, Oslo, Norway, let's we'll go be there. Ready for new orders soon. Does not appear to be any uh, anyone else in Oslo. So what else? What other mission? I guess I have to wait until the uh, uh, assignments. So it's not it's not a turn based game. Um, it's a game that you know is is technically a real time strategy game. But the the assignments themselves work in like what ten day or twelve day blocks. Um, I don't know if something speeds that up later. If there's a way to accelerate y your um, your turnarounds on assignments, but the assignments themselves form turns. Every time it pops up, confirm assignment. That's like a new turn phase. Um, it's Again, very interesting game design. I, I haven't, you know, this is a new take on um, the top-down map management games. something to happen waiting for something to happen waiting for something to happen what's going on in ukraine russia got kicked out of ukraine they're licking their wounds in crimea which uh <laughs> let me tell you the, the kirch bridge this morning boy did I, I i have a wonderful morning i wake up and not only has canada agreed We've to the needle. ban um 10 000 members of the iranian revolutionary guard corps from our country permanently um but the Kerch Bridge got taken out. Uh, at least um, like three quarters or two thirds of the bridge um, it was just annihilated in an explosion this morning that killed three people. Um, I'm not celebrating the deaths of those three people. Don't know who they were. Can't celebrate it, um, but we'll definitely celebrate the destruction of the bridge um, because that was like a, a one-two punch uh, to Vladimir Putin himself. They're like really like just, just ruined his day. And yesterday was his birthday, you know? Um, my birthday's coming up next week, but uh, yeah, yesterday was Vladimir Putin's birthday. Um, and he turned 70, and the morning after, he wakes up and he, he opens the newspaper. I guess it wouldn't be the morning there. Um, the next the next 24-hour cycle, uh, he opens the newspaper, and uh, his bridge is gone, um, at least most of it. So that's going to that's gonna set things back just a little bit, just a little bit. Um, okay, public 
campaign mission success. Prepping for next mission. Okay. So something did happen, but we're still not at the, um, the next phase. That's fine. I want to get a control point in Norway. That's my, my next goal. We'll start to, uh, start to get the Scandinavian block. The Canado Scandinavian. Uh, you know, I might just do an Arctic Council thing, excluding Russia. Um, you know, Iceland seems useful. I wonder if Iceland could have a space program. Like, if you really wanted to to use... Because it's it's got altitude and elevation. It's in the middle of the ocean, so you don't have to worry about splashdown. Like, I guess it's cold water. That's the, like... You know, it's probably better to launch things in, you know, Cape Canaveral into the Gulf of Mexico or, or the, the southern Atlantic there and then uh, North Atlantic. <laughs> uh, you don't want to swim in that. But I wonder. I wonder if Iceland could have a space program. That's my... I think that's my goal. We're going to... We're going <laughs> to inaugurate the Icelandic space program um, in, in future. If I can build a spaceport there, we'll see. Single control point. Okay. No navies. It's a full democracy. 300,000 people. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Kaliningrad is, is part of Russia. Wait a second. Wait a second. Does resistance have? Let's not let's not be too quick about trusting the resistance. The resistance are heavily integrated. They've chosen to make their capital in Germany. Um, that's interesting to note. So this is you know very much the yeah. All right, all right. I see what's happening there. Where are other factions? I guess I don't know where they are until I encounter them, right? Like, I can't see... Um, the, like, the Academy, I can see. Uh, they got... France and America. Um, the... Oh, look at this. Belize. The elites. The satanic elites have Belize. Go figure. Um, that's not... That's not a little on the nose or anything. Um... My spy wants me to get a control point in Russia. What's their open control point? National Industries. National Industries. So, subvert Russia's national industries and security apparatus. So they don't have a mass media, of course. They've got security apparatus, the party, and the executive. Interesting. Acknowledged. Oh, what are we going to do here? What are we going to do here? Standing by for orders. No, I want my control point in Norway. Where do you need me? I need you in Norway. Bringing them to our side. Ready. Your orders? And you are going to protect On him, guard. and he is going to Your orders. continue his public campaign. I will tell our story. Every circumstance is an opportunity. Our test is to recognize and seize it. My skin is crawling. So the initiative, uh, the shadowy cabal, reveal little about themselves or their methods. In some regions, they are behind rampant ru rumors that the alien arrival is a fabrication. It's a hoax. It's a conspiracy, I tell you, um, by Earth's governments and corporations. In others, they have founded companies that sell products which allegedly protect from a fictitious alien disease that they seem to have made up. Um, so the initiative are playing both sides of this. They are um, fear, uncertainty, and doubt embodied. And that's... That's pretty on the nose. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, yeah. Uh, not not gonna not gonna not gonna do an initiative playthrough anytime soon. I don't think, unless I, you know, no. I'll keep them safe.
potential new counselors. Yeah, I could probably stand to expand. Um, although I don't have I don't have the influence because I'm bribing nations over to our side. Who can I afford? A British judge. Everybody needs a British judge in their back pocket, right? Oh, loyal. Perceptive. Got some administrative skills. She can detain a counselor. That's useful. All right. Another, you know, she's, in her, she's turning 50 next year. That's okay. Still looks fine. Oh, look at this. She's governments. She's non grata, which means that she faces imprisonment or execution in rival nations to her home nation. So British ri England's rivals. So I'm not going to send her to Russia. Um, this is like this is like the Christia Freeland, um, you know, Russian oligarch back and forth. Um, it, like personal um, sanctions, personal sanctions. She's, oh, that's so cool. Um, she's aware, she's connected, ethical. Lone Wolf, um, plus two espionage, but she cannot inspire, and she's streetwise. That's really cool. Uh, I really like these personal traits. Uh, they really make each of these characters very unique. Um, I haven't looked at all the traits for all of my people, and I guess that's probably the first thing I should have done. Um, it's Pollyanna. Always expresses a sunny outlook on events, regardless of their reality. It's going to be fine. This is fine. Again, glad this, glad that. What is all this glad business you talk about? Oh, just a game I play. What kind of a game? A game my father taught me. Helps sometimes. Helps what? When things aren't going so well. He's famous. Um, he's broadly known among the elites and the public. That can be a good thing and a bad thing. Um, I've enjoyed a moderate, modest, tiny degree of infamy, I can tell you. If you don't have the money to pay for a security detail or transportation, um, having people know you isn't always the best thing, um, especially if they strongly disagree with you or what you're doing. Um, he's prosperous, so he's well off. So he's, he's prosperous and he's famous. This, those two kind of go hand in hand. Um, and government, he's a member of a recognized government with official status. This grants access to organizations not available to other counselors so i need a lot of influence to get these orgs um i get it okay and so she's affluent and famous rosalie samard um she's suspicious she's in government she's a hard target and we've already looked at at her cool very cool I just keep saying that, and I'm not going to stop saying it. It's so cool. Okay, just roll the clock. Wait, what happened to my Norway mission? What happened to my Norway mission? Why, are, why is everybody in Canada? Uh-oh. Uh-oh, something messed up. I, I think I, I might have assigned all those missions to, to Toronto. Which means we're about to have complete control over Canada and nothing else. It's a Canadian takeover. It's a Maple Spring. Maple Spring for the Protectorate. We'll see. We'll see what happens. I mean, it is admittedly kind of a slow start to the game. Like, uh, like really um, could clip along a little faster. I guess. I guess if I just like sped things up to the maximum, it would. But then I might I might miss some stuff. Public campaign mission success. Um, let's just close it. Yeah. So I did just assign all those missions to Canada. Alien flea detected. Whoa! I did not expect that at this stage. Okay. Transferring to low Earth orbit. The aliens are fucking coming. They crashed a ship here, and now there's just a fucking fleet. All right, let's slow time down to a normal pace.
They are moving. Our supporters are in place. Canada, we've got three control. It's a change in ownership. I just got the achievement. Um, you don't see that, but I do. Um, that's neat. Three control points in Canada. Justin Trudeau is my. All right. Um, what are we? What are we doing here? Watching the alien fleet creep toward her. Like, I'm not. Uh, I'm not feeling. I'm not feeling so good about that. God only knows where they're gonna land. A <laughs> alien ship spotted over <laughs> the Rogers Center. Um, Cleaning things up. Okay, advisory team. We may now appoint our faction's chief advisors with a management team on board. So focus on economic development. Steely-eyed missile women and men. Yeah, I'm a big fan of... I've said this before on streams. I'm a big fan of missiles. Um, I think I think um, we should be, especially given the orientation of Elon Musk um, and his um, corporate imperialism, um, we should be investing more in uh, homegrown uh, like anti-satellite missiles and surface space uh, multi-stage missiles um, at the national level, not at the international level, but each nation state should be working and pioneering its own. Hell, we should have like 3D printable anti-satellite missiles that are like ubiquitous um, in in uh, defense arsenals around the world, just, just as a way of like leveling the playing field because killer satellites coming along and we're not ready for it. Um, well, the entire planet could be held hostage from space. Look what's happening with Putin right now and the nukes. Um, and think long term about what that might mean should some of those nukes be based on satellites or other technologies, um, so super big lasers or whatever, um, things we haven't even thought of yet uh, based on satellites. Um, even the ability to cut uh, portions of the Earth off, um, you know, Starlink has been failing in Ukraine, um, you know, region by region as the regions have been falling to the Ukrainian forces. Um, it's taken some time for Starlink to come online. It's actually gone offline um, in the contested areas after they've been captured. Um, there was some conjecture that Elon might be doing that on purpose, but the official plausible deniable answer is that they're just trying to prevent the Russians from using the surface, which um, does make a degree of sense. But like, again, um, they're, they're able to cut cities, neighborhoods, uh, you know, regions off from um, internet access from communications. Like, that's bad. That's a bad. Um, so we should be able to defend ourselves against that and to fire back. Anyway, that's that's my, that's my take on missiles. I think we're going to go with the missile people, generals or international aid. See, that's your neoliberal option right there. International aid, um, welfare priority, and knowledge priority. But let's... Let's bring in the steely-eyed missile women and men. And non-binary folks. The trick folks. is not to look directly at what you're trying to see. Offset your focal point somewhere to the side of where you think you notice the movement. At night, the center of your vision doesn't work as well as during the day. I won't try to explain the science to you. What matters is you'll see whatever is out there before they see you. Colonel Hans Castillo, advising conscripts in Colombia. It's good advice. It's good advice. Don't look directly at your target. Look slightly past your target. Um, unfocus your eyes, um, and you're going to see the movement. I don't know why that is relevant to Skywatch. I guess we're looking for movement in space, because there is movement in space currently. Um, okay, take me there. Skywatch. Resistance contributed most and select the deep space propulsion concept as a new direction for global research. Okay, so it's interesting. If you contribute to the research, you get to pick the next. Got it. We're still working on audience research. We're like, we want to we want to relate to the people. We're going to hire some Instagram influencers to be like, yeah, the protectorate is great. Um, you know, really do be like that. Okay, let's get through to the next phase so I can unfuck this clusterfuck that is... Oh, there we go. Okay, confirm assignments. <sighs> Some supporters in South Korea. Yeah, let's... Let's... Let's let's heck and control South Korea. The Academy already has a control point there. I wonder, I wonder if there's... Fa I guess there are probably our factional alliances, like the Academy and the Protector can work together... Um, and not and not fight each other directly, like, but maybe their interests are competing in some areas, um, whereas like the initiative and the protectorate are like diametrically opposed to each other, um, and that, you know that's gonna that's gonna end very badly. That will end in blood, fire, and tears. Okay. Um, Surveilling target area. Ready for orders. 
Whoa, Daisy Farrell's English accent just... Okay, what's she gonna do? <laughs> I could make England declare war on someone. Um, that's, that's cute. Uh, oh, you can purge factions through crackdowns. Disable the benefits of a control point. Oh my goodness. Oh my. Um... Stabilize nations. Hmm. 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 I think Daisy Farrell. She's gonna go to Canada, and she's gonna advise the Canadian government. Lending my expertise. Oh, see, there is a Ready. little plane. Okay. Rosalie, please go to um, Control Korea. Taking control. And standing by. Fit our. Uh, well, he can. He's he's the cool guy, eh? He's my. He's my. <laughs> uh, he can do crackdowns too. This he's seeing. This is like jack of all trades. Um, very cool. Very cool. Okay, what do we want to do here? Um. Our people in place. Get a control point in Norway now. Okay, I'm finally doing what I wanted to do. We're going to confirm these assignments. And we're going to see what happens. Probably running down on uh, the total length I want to get into a video here. Um, so I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to save and quit shortly. Um, but... Let's see. That's fine. Offering counsel. Continue. At all, at all costs, I'd like to avoid a war between the Koreas. <laughs> the initiative is controlling North Korea. It's like, yeah, these are these are uh, very on point observations that you know North Korea. Well, it's like the Hermit Kingdom is supposedly independent. Is like just just a just like a puppet that represents the aspirations of a pro autocracy. Uh, class, a global class that favors like petty monarchies um, and does so often under the auspices of like being anti-imperialist or progressive. Um, you know, I've I've stopped calling them tankies. Um, if any of you know what a tanky is, I've stopped calling them tankies. And I'm, I'm starting to call them ollies because they're on side with the oligarchs. And, and that's that's really the correct, um, precise terminology for the current year. Remembrance Day 2022. Uh, Starfield was supposed to come out today and didn't. The world economy would have, like, taken a 6% nosedive as everybody stayed home to play. Crackdown in Canada? What? What? The, the enemy is... What, what enemy? Take me there. What does this mean? Grants no benefits and can be purged. Assigned armies also fought in one month. Okay, we're gonna have to. She's cleaning things up. Yeah, we're gonna have to. You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna play this one out. We're we're keeping control of the Canada and fuck these bastards. Convoy is not getting anywhere. Not on my watch. Interesting. Belfast, United Kingdom. That's uh. I mean, I guess true, but I wonder if that's something you can change in this game. Trigger a little, a little dust up. Irish reunification of what twenty twenty four. Let's make it so. Oh come on, come on! I gotta get, I gotta get some agents to Canada. So really, is you know, it's gonna be like a game We've of di people in place. diplomatic whack-a-mole. Um, okay. Wrapping up here. Okay. Good. Norway. I got, got a control point. Norway. I control their legislature. Our 
presence is growing. And we got Korea. We're a little low on influence, though. I gotta find a way to get that influence up. I guess it's really just traveling around making that sales pitch in different countries, right? I should be doing, like, more outreach missions maybe for a while to, like, build my influence base and then um, keep the number of counselors low. I think uh, the more counselors you have, the less influence you get uh, per month. Not more, just less, but... It's kind of like a Hearts of Iron mechanic. Or, uh, sorry, Europa Universalis mechanic there. Oh, we're not, we're not unpaused. See, that's... There should be big text in the middle of the screen that says paused or something. Something to let you know rather than having to look at the top and just realize that the lights aren't flickering and the, the stations aren't orbiting. Rosalie can buy some orgs. Uh, she can get MI5. We need a lot of influence to make this happen. Okay, confirming assignments. So, we are now going to... I can't afford to defend my interests in Canada. Okay, he's going to go to ground in Canada for now. Going silent. Standing by. She can do some stuff. We're going to surveil Canada. Setting a watch. Well, specifically, we're going to surveil in Toronto. Me? Dame Judy Dench. Um... Stabilize the nation. We'll restore peace to this nation. Standing by for orders. And let's see what kind of national policies we can select in Canada. Okay. They are not life forms or Xenosapiens. They are demons incarnate. They and the traitors who support them will face our judgment. Yeah, fuck this guy. No human supremacists tolerated in the Protectorate. We're not going to work. Where are they based? Uh, looks like Tajikistan. <laughs> Dushanbe, uh, Tajikistan. Oh, or are they? Yeah, they are. Yeah. Um, so the human supremacists uh, are like a Central Asian thing right now. And Kyrgyzstan goes to the initiative. So this isn't a game that's going to teach you much about geography because the like the blobs in the map really like aren't super representative of the actual regions or places. Um, you know, that's not Tokyo, right? Anything going on in Australia? I was just trying to get some control points in New Zealand. Bet you they're a good spot for a space program, I think. Oh yeah, there's a launch complex. Yeah, 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 that's okay. Cool. Initiating deep cover. Initiating surveillance. So there was no enemy agent here. I don't know who did the coup or the, the crackdown. That might be, you know, to be honest, it might be the Academy. Like, it, it might be the uh, forces trying to influence things in the United States. And I, I could, um, I could work to influence America. That might make some sense as well. Like, bring the biggest and most powerful country on side early. Um, audience research. Our influencers are ready to go. 
Oh, so the next thing um, we need to research is going to be... Wait a tick. So I don't know who the leaders of the Academy or Project Exodus are yet. They have not revealed themselves. Um, hmm. Oh, this is cool. So wars, the Russia-Ukraine Russia war is still going. Um, I don't know what that little nuclear bomb icon means. I don't. <laughs> that could be bad, right? Uh, but the prevailing uh, global opinion is 14% for cooperation with the aliens. Um, I feel like cooperation and appeasement are aligned. The Academy and the Protectorate are going to wind up working together, um, almost certainly. Um, various exploitable beliefs, the initiative. Just like tinfoil conspiracy theory, the aliens are giving us all the diseases, they're turning the freaking frogs gay, right? Like, yeah, yeah, that's the, uh, <laughs> the initiative, the oligarchs. In a nutshell, um, it doesn't matter just so long as it's syncretic and convincing. Um, they'll talk out both sides of their mouth. And uh, escape the aliens has five percent. We gotta, we gotta run. Head for the, head for the hills. Head for the stars. Um, and uh, resistance is only at three percent. So they're six percent are leaning towards fascism, and that's not good. Fifty-three percent are undecided. So we're, uh, we're gonna chip away at this. Man, this is so cool. Um, Commodities, atmospheric methane, atmospheric carbon dioxide. We're at 419. Take that, 350.org. Um, we have killed the climate. We are locked into uh, plus one degree average global temperature change. Um, and we're just going to keep going. Um, and so, boy, climate policy is going to be a thing. This is like, this is a super sophisticated game. I am N enthralled enthralled um and we control canada so mission accomplished the great canadian takeover uh has been achieved accepting this weird crackdown on the legislative branch um i don't i don't fully understand what crackdowns do maybe i should uh i guess i'd, I'd have to see um anyway i'll leave that to another time i don't even know what this means don't even know what this means. This is fantastic. Populist, reactionary, authoritarian, totalitarian, militarist governments. Ah. Uh, Hooded Horse, you've done it again. Um, I play Nebulous Fleet Command, and now I play Terra Invicta. Well, that is, in fact, all for me for now. This is Postmodern Cowboy playing Terra Invicta, a grand strategy espionage, space conflict, human conflict, alien arrival video game um, from uh, Pavanus Interactive and Publisher Hooded Horse. Uh, if you like watching me play these games, if you want to chat politics down in the comments below, you know, hit it up. Um, let me know what you think. Otherwise, uh, stay tuned for future episodes and other videos that I'm doing. Um, and uh, follow me on Twitter, Pomo underscore Cowboy. Uh, like and subscribe to my channel, of course. And uh, yeah, keep it peaceful out there.